Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good listeners of the Fairview City of Fairfield, Iowa, welcome to another session. Is that a session or another segment, another episode of City Business, the continuing saga of Fairfield, not Jefferson County, Fairfield now. We have Michael Hale- Halley join- hailing us from <laughs> across the street. He actually works across the street and lives across the street, so we're pretty much safe saying that. However you want to look at it, Jason Strong in the house from FMC, Fairfield Media Center. And uh, we are pleased to bring you the latest haps from City Hall. Michael is the fourth city council person. And uh, we have uh, the latest. What's happening? How are you doing today, Michael? Good. Glad to be here. Well, good to see you. What you got on the docket? All right. This is a informal review of the September 14th, 2015 regular city council meeting. We had quite a few appearances. Uh, sometimes we have none, but this time we had several. First was from Karen Haring. She was representing the ninth annual Oktoberfest committee, requesting some street closures, not street closures, sorry, some parking space closures on the south side of Central Park where they have their horse-drawn carriage. It comes kind of circles around the square. So we cool. said yes, and then they also... I think they were the ones who started the whole beverage garden uh, tradition on Central Park. Since Oktoberfest, which is a German tradition in the Bavarian region of Germany, the southeast region. It's very much fun. Uh, as, a, as a large drinking component, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very much a part of that uh, heritage. So uh, to have a beer garden is very much in accord with Oktoberfest. So then we heard from some unhappy neighbors of a, I'm not going to name the exact property. It's public knowledge, but I don't want to pick on the property owner who got a tongue lashing at the meeting from everyone involved uh, owning a property in town and bought it many years ago, intended to fix it up. And then um, recession came and the money wasn't there. And because it wasn't lived in, it got vandalized had animals living in at some point, and really just the neighbors felt that brought the whole uh, quality of the neighborhood down, and they are fed up, so they came to City Hall and had a petition from wow, the neighbors. Wow, this is, like, and, this yeah, is they, like the real thing. Yeah, they were they were unhappy. and uh, I don't I don't mean to make light of it. It's, well, uh, yeah, it's, it's what, and it's been dragging on for quite some time. Okay. I was on the, this council's property committee, I can't remember, years ago at some point, and this came up and we the city always try to work with property owners to bring them up to code so our code enforcement officer who's also our uh, fire chief he's both part-time both scott vaughn worked with the property owner to try to bring everything up to code and years passed and it's still not quite there so we uh, decided to grant him six months to get it where it needs to be so april 1st deadline to continue to work with our code enforcement officer but really just setting a deadline uh the property owner was there and felt that that deadline was reasonable so trying to coax it along in terms of legal recourse if the city tried to then uh, purchase the property it's complicated. It has, I think, two liens against it, and it just gets into a nightmare in a sense because you know the city doesn't want to own a property if we don't need to. It's not really what we're there for, and we don't want to have to go that route if the person can then bring it up to standard. So um, I was going to say, does that make it a lien to? But that was too obvious, so I won't. <laughs> All right, we heard from um, a citizen who wanted to talk about. Uh, ADA compliance at the uh, the Roosevelt Rec Center. And what's so, that? Uh, America with Disability Act. Okay. Was something that um, came on the federal books years I ago know and that, had yes. some upgrades somewhat recently. So it encourages municipalities, cities, counties, states to uh, to make all new construction handicap accessible and to retrofit existing structures and streets and sidewalks to be ADA compliant. If you notice around town, the, the rule, rather than the exception, if you look at the, the sidewalks where they meet the road, the city has, has made 
quite an effort over the years to make those ADA compliant. You have the little uh, orangish red access, yeah, rumble strip there that that helps the uh, wheelchairs get grip. And so, yes, there are several intersections. I'm keenly aware of it because that's one of my little side projects is a sidewalk master plan and try to bring everything up to standard. But in the meantime, um, we continually upgrade the sidewalks where they meet the streets to be ADA compliant. All new city buildings in the last 20 years nice. are ADA compliant. The new indoor pool, the new library, even the convention center, which was not initially a city building, but now is. Uh, the new uh, gym, so the outdoor pool, the indoor pool, and the new gym all will be, but the old recreation or the old Roosevelt school that has been, that was at some point the city purchased and decided to use it as a recreation center is not. With the upstairs and all it's that. It's multi-floor. It's three, mm -hmm. three levels. And uh, the, the park and rec board had looked into what would it cost to put an elevator in looking at about a million dollars in a building that's not even worth a million. And it's really on its way out. It's probably got another decade or so of life in it. So it's one of those situations where is it fiscally responsible to upgrade an old building or can we bring some of the elements that were in there, some of the, the fitness equipment that you would find in that building, can we bring it into the new one? And yes, there is some room um, around the track, there's some areas where, if you know that the track is oval and mm -hmm. then the courts go in there, there's some spots in there where we can bring in some equipment that would be accessible to, to um, handicapped individuals. So the city is really making an effort. Uh, the, uh, the speaker equated it to segregation in the South versus non-segregation, which... You know, you don't do partial desegregation. You have to do entire, you know, you have to go all the way. So mm -hmm. you can't say, well, most of our buildings are ADA. Mm -hmm. She says, no, you have to make them all. The spirit of the law is that um, governments are to work towards that. And I guess the word would be reasonable uh, fashion. So we're not there in that old building and probably never will be in that building but at some point, we will replace that building with a single-story rec center that will be accessible. But the new gym will offer some relief because some of the equipment that currently is unavailable will be available in the new gym. Great. Well, speaking of uh, segregation, I've been studying that just the last few days, writing an article about Ari Berman. It's going to be in uh, Iowa City next month, his book, Give Us the Ballot. Mm -hmm. When you look carefully through that awful history— I'm not trying to make a comparison or not. I mean, uh, I get the point, but uh, yeah, might might be different uh, things. And how how interesting the desire to do it does it make sense? Um, and can whatever is not being accessed be made available yeah. to whatever degree? I yeah. guess that's part of working things out. Yes, and the uh, indoor pool has made an effort. Uh, had an individual who was not able to access the pool, and they made special arrangements for the individual to use the pool, to use the hot tub as part of, of his uh, therapy mm -hmm. and did what was needed to make it happen. And so even on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, I think the, um, the citizen who brought this was looking more um, philosophically that it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to. This person shouldn't have to have Which a, is a fair. special case situation. Which is a fair point. Yeah. And then it just has to be in, in the reality of it. Yeah. So I'm not sure what this individual... Uh, what the arrangements needed to be because, like I said, it is accessible from a wheelchair. It's ground level. Maybe this person needed needed more support than that. But um, I think the parks, Park and Rec Department, like any city department, is working towards that as much as we can. And I think uh, overall doing a, a good job. And ADA important, not to be confused with ADH or AD... HD? HD, <laughs> which I know nothing about. All right, we had one more... A uh, group of citizens who were unhappy. Uh oh! It was really a I night. wasn't there. Was it I? It was a night for unhappiness. <laughs> Where was I? It was three in a row. Uh, shouldn't joke. So Highland Street. The story goes simply that the city, I believe, made an error in judgment by awarding a contract and allowing a window of completion that did not fit well with 
weather patterns in the state of Iowa. We allowed the contractor to tear out the road in spring to reconstruct. The contractor's plan was to tear it out and reconstruct it all in about a two week period of time. As soon as they tore it out, rain came. This particular street is unusual. It does not have a rock sub base. Some of the, the uh, streets in town that were probably annexed in at some point, they were poured or they were, they were uh, installed in a, a fashion that doesn't match the stormwater system of the town. So they have a, a, a dirt sub base need to dry out before you pour the road or else the road won't last. And so every time it looked that it might dry out enough to pour, it rained again. The same rain was what held off the I remember the foundation for the new gym, the basketball court, several other projects that just couldn't pour. Right, and turned us into pineapple and avocado growers. Well, not quite, but it was awfully green. Very close, yes. So the rain was a problem. And then the rain has subsided, but now the contractor is not getting over there to do it. And it's long past the date of completion that the contract said. And if, if the city were to try to make a, a legal issue, the contractor could point to the weather and, and probably would, would not be, I don't even know what we would do, find them. So we're trying to work with the contractor, setting up a new date of completion that's four weeks out and uh, believe that that's a fair amount of time to get it done. In the meantime, the neighbors, a couple, a couple who live on that street, not so who happy. happened to ha have that part of the street that was tore up as about a block, maybe not quite about half a block. They haven't accessed their driveway all summer. And then with the rain, they've been sloshing through yards. And so it's, it's uh, instead of making the blame game, it's let's learn a lesson here. First of all, let's get this thing poured as soon as possible. And then second, let's just think about this type of project. How about we don't allow construction in spring, but rather later in the season when it's more likely to be dry enough to pour as a rule. So uh, the rest of that street will need to be um, torn out and redone or the, the rest of that block at some point hopefully before winter because it is pretty torn up but this is just one of those i don't want to say it's a perfect storm i mean you had something odd like one of the owners of the business died recently and so that put a little bit of a you know just add an extra layer of difficulty but our hearts go out to the people there and and yeah. everyone in the city side was very apologetic yeah what i mean it is a lot to deal with no question oh yeah that would be that would not be a fun summer. By the way, this is City Business. I'm James Moore. This is Michael Halley. We have Jason Strong in the house and more from City Haps. This All is right. Crew FM too. Hundred. Well, then after we uh, we uh, heard from the citizens, we jumped into our action items. So one was just a resolution. Yeah, it sounds like it, but it's, I don't even want to read this. But I'm going to because I want it. Better be action, man. <laughs> it is, man authorizing and providing for the incurrence of indebtedness for the purpose of providing a Sorry. portion of the cost of acquiring, construction, constructing, enlarging, improving, and or extending its public body facility to serve an area lawfully within its jurisdiction to serve. Oh, man. I tell you, the legality of some of this stuff, just the legal jargon. You lost me at uh, something. Right. In layman's terms. Yes. Uh, we had two points. What are you calling lame, man? <laughs> two, two <laughs> point. I tell you, now it's an action item. Two point six million dollar grant Whoa. from the USDA. Right. Part of that was that we agreed to borrow the remainder of the cost of the project. So the project right. was seven that. ish million for phase one. So two point six grant. The rest we borrow. These were just simply the terms of that, and so talked about things such as uh, we have, a, have to have a loan for construction, but kind of like a construction loan on a house. Once the house is done, you then refinance into a mortgage. This works similarly. Once that phase is deemed complete, we refinance with the USDA and we get our nice low interest rate with them. But there were a few um, details. They said that at some point during the cycle or the life of the loan, which I think is a 40 year loan, they may require us to refinance. Uh, I asked, does that mean a higher interest rate? Maybe is the answer. We don't know, but 
these are just their rules. For sure, possibly. Yeah, I mean, you consider. No. I mean, maybe. You never know. But if it, if rates went down and they allowed us to refinance, we've done that several times on mm -hmm. old bonds and saved hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that would be nice. Um, but it was just all the the details of that contract so that we can move forward and get the 2.6 million. Right. So and then I just wonder that was an action item, right? That was a resolution. Oh, resolution. Okay. Actually, yeah, we, we only had one action item. Sorry. The rest were resolutions, public <laughs> hearings. So we had some more resolutions to authorize, uh, the sale, the agreement, the development agreement for the sale of one, two, three South 23rd. That's where Midwest recycling MRC was. Right. We had a development agreement with them that they faulted on. The development agreement says we sell the, the property to you contingent on certain fixes to the property. We told them they have to fix the electrical. They have to fix the uh, insulation. There's all these, these contingencies fixing the, um, the water issues that were causing mold in the past. You know, that has to be fixed. And then they need to bring a certain number of jobs to town. And they, they're confident they can bring eight jobs to town wow. by next year. And this is Red Cannon, uh, who modify RVs. Not really RVs. They're more like Jeeps that they have this large cab that they can install. The Jeep has a, has a strong base. They can install this large, larger than average cab on the top that's got room for sleeping and storage and such. And then they, they fit it with solar panels so that you could potentially drive out somewhere remote and still have electricity and some of the comforts at and home. And still watch TV. Basically. Still watch Netflix <laughs> <laughs> on your iPhone. Probably not TV. But <laughs> Something. Yeah, so... Uh, well, that's fascinating. It is. And, and so, how does that, that compare to power wagons? I guess a whole different thing. Very different, but... I guess they're both kind of trucks. So there's, 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 segue. Some, there's some very real about them. But well, we're glad to get it. That's It'll fantastic. be fixed up for one. Yes. And then to add when, jobs. What's the uh, time frame? Well, the fixing needs to be done by spring and then they've got a little longer to get the jobs, but they say they've got orders and they can actually, wow. they want to do a, a model where they build, uh, they have them ready. A lot of times in this particular industry, apparently there's an whole industry that does this. You have to order ahead of time and wait months. But they think, well, if we can build them and have them ready and then sell, they think they can turn them over pretty quickly. This is the place that's right now. It's over by uh, uh, Boom Fitness. Right. They just got the one space for one. Oh, I wonder what was world. going in that's, there. That's them. Okay. So they're going to expand out cool. at uh, 23rd. Great use of the building. I'll tell you this neck of the woods. It's happening over here, baby. Yeah, it is happening. Boom. So we had three facade improvement easement resolutions. Okay. Uh, so if you remember this project, mm -hmm. it was 50%. Grant, 50% private investment, and we have a total of nine properties. We had two approved last time. These are additional three. I'm going to say the businesses that occupy them, that might be, so Palmer um, and Davis Real Estate, that's on the corner of Court and Burlington, mm -hmm. that's included. Uh, Neil Cunningham's Futon Store is included. Central Park, yeah. Yep. And then uh, the Elks Building. Wow. That'll the, be nice. Yeah. The, not a whole lot going, but painting the blue, a more earth tone, mm -hmm. adding some, I think they're actually faux windows. Faux or five? Faux windows. Oh, fake sorry. windows. <laughs> all right. Now. I'm going way yeah, too far. Really. <laughs> it's all right. No coffee either. This is just me. So false windows, we'll call them. False. Yes. Just to give or, a certain look. Or faux with A-U-X. A That's it. That's the one I was going for. So to give a kind of, yeah. A, yeah, a so it's, it is very much facade-ish. Uh, mm -hmm. Marquis de Facade. Oh, damn it. There Sorry. you go. All right, what else do we do? Well, we did approve the Highland Change Order, which was saying now you've gotten to October 14th to get this street paved. So we're going to take that to the contractor, and hopefully they will sign it without any issue. All right. Uh, Are they local? They're from Burlington, Burlington, and they so. do a lot of business with us. And just to get back to, to this real quickly, yeah, uh, the way that, that public bidding is done is that if it's a reputable company, then the city will always choose a low bid to save taxpayers money. Mm -hmm. And I know one time years ago when I was on the council where we had never heard of a company who was the low bid, we went with them and they did not follow through. 
And so I'm not going to say they go on a blacklist, but it's not forgotten mm -hmm. if a contractor uh, doesn't fulfill requirements. Well, any business deals with... Exactly. So mm -hmm. it's in their interest to to pull this through. They're also working over on 3rd Street oh. um, between Iowa and another one, Monroe mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. um, so they're doing that. And so they've got their... their street deconstruction crew over on third then they're going to come try to pave highland they're going to come over and try to pave third so they're in town and they're working on other projects but uh shipley i believe was the company did the quiet zone upgrades as well i mean they've done several projects so we have had good results with them um well this this was a funny it's very unusual circumstance so let's not let's not throw yeah. them out you know with the dirty bath water so to speak, just yet. They may still be, uh, they may still come through for us. The mayor simply had one committee appointment. He uh, appointed Aletta, 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 I thought it was Mati. He pronounced it Matet, but I thought it was, their last name was Mati, hmm. to the Beautification Commission. M-O-T-T-E-T? M-O-T-T-E-T. -T -T. That's usually Mati. Yeah, I thought so. I thought he pronounced it funny, but, but some, who am I? <clears throat> no, some go by different, you know. They're exactly. Different. Some Hallie. say potato. Some well, you say. tried to say Haley, but no, it's Hallie. For but the I record. was hailing Hallie. That's right. You were. Committee what? of Board Reports, Property Committee. This is an important public service announcement. If you have a business and you want to put a sign on the business, around the business, any sort of sign, please check with City Hall. Please make sure your sign is in accordance with our sign ordinance. You may be wasting your money if you build a sign that is not in accord with the ordinance and then can't get a variance for it, which is I think that, may have happened in this situation. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that, but is there a, is, are the parameters laid out anywhere? Yeah, you can get them. Um, City Hall has copies. That's the easiest way to do it, just get a On, copy. Online or not? not yeah, sure. probably somewhere. I think I've had pretty good success going to cityoffairfieldiowa.com, the city's okay. website. There's a little search bar, right. and typing in something like signs, and it should come up, and if there's some portion of the ordinance that references sign i've noticed it tends to want to reference more recent documents right so if there's any talk of signs in any committee report or any council agenda it will tag those so sometimes you can type in a sign ordinance and that should help find what you need if not city hall is pretty close by here in our small town of fairfield or call them and they can go over it with you, but it's just there's there's size limits. Okay. Just because I I think we might have adopted some best use. I don't know if it's the, we've made them up. But just, not, not colors or... I don't thing, believe it's uh, so much colors, but um, in some areas, it's not supposed to flash. You right. know, in our cultural district, for example, I think we're not really supposed to have the flashing neons in there. I came on the council right when this was being... I might have actually been right before I was on council. After I was elected, I had... A little time before I started and I came to the meetings. I remember talking about signs and flashing signs and how often can they flash and some really minutia detail. Um, well, the I ordinance see, is I see place. more of them along Burlington, but I think that's not the cultural Yeah, that's they're allowed there. District. But they're we but, couldn't do it here, I think, because we're a cultural district. But even the signs where they uh, electronic signs, they have a limit to how often they can scroll. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> and again, it wasn't something made up. It's some best practice, probably from the DOT, about distracting drivers or, or whatnot. So there you have it. Uh, sign ordinance. Check it before you buy a sign that may not be, or install a sign that may not be in accord. And this is for anyone in the cultural district? Anyone in town. Anyone in town, and basically. Within city limits, okay. yeah. All right. Uh, public safety and transportation. We just were trying to help the farmer's market with their... Sometimes they, they occupy a block of grimes between Maine and Court. Mm -hmm. And when they do, there's no uh, handicap accessible parking because that's where oh. the one spot is. So they say, well, can we move that to Maine? So we'll move one handicap spot to Maine. Oh, I see. Moving the uh, spot. Uh, yeah, the spot. Yep. And then actually um, put another one at the far end of the grimes parking just to give a little bit more wow. handicap access. What a great idea. So we passed that. Um, this is cool. Personnel committee, six month review of city administrator, Mike Harmon. We, uh, we contracted with Patrick Callahan, who was the, uh, the gentleman from the company who went through the hiring process. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've been through this three times now as a council member, Patrick hats off to you. He was the best to work with. 
He's a former city administrator himself. Um, I'm not trying to plug him too much, but really made the process uh, smooth and kind of actually almost fun, if I could say that. And it was tedious. You had to hear from a lot of Wow, people, tedious and fun. What but is that? he made it as fun as you can, you can make it. Fun tedious? Yes. T-funniest? Uh, but he said he did not want to just drop off the radar once we hired. He said, I'll come back in six months and I will Great. conduct a, a review. So he provided the same review form for the council members, for the department heads, and for Mike Harmon himself. And this is what um, Councilman Doug Flournoy, the personnel committee chair, said. He said the similarities between them all were striking. Just the way that the council perceives Mike, the way the department heads perceive Mike, and the way he perceives himself matched up wow. so nicely. It was overwhelmingly positive. Very good. Patrick Callahan, the, the consultant, said he'd never seen such positive reviews after six months before. And everyone just had that feeling of, we got the right guy, we're heading the right direction. So now it'll go to annual reviews, and just like most employees have. But it was just really great to see um, everyone feeling the same way, that, that he's just doing a stellar job. Well, what a great win. Yep. One more announcement about okay. everyone's favorite night of candy and sugar rushes. Trigger treat. Ooh. This year, this is amazing. Everyone's always wanted this, but it's going to happen. It's actually on Halloween. That's just not right. It's the rightest it can get. Saturday, October 31st, 5.30 to 8 p.m. Trick or treat. Get mm -hmm. your candy. Down Main Street. Yep. Uh, we also heard a rec center update. The gym is moving along nicely. They're going to try to get it all enclosed so they can work on the interior over the winter. And the Park and Rec gave an annual report, showed that the pool actually, I, I don't know if say it profited more. It didn't profit more, but it was less expensive to run than they had figured. So oh. that was good. So they found ways of running. Or just they just somehow the, the gap between what they expected the expenditures to be and what they expected the income. Both were smaller, but the gap was more narrow, huh. I noticed on the report. So that's a good sign when it costs less. I mean, it used to cost, let's say, 50 k a year just every summer to run the outdoor pool. That was the net loss. Mm -hmm. And so if that's smaller, then that's still, you know, it's never going to be a profit maker. Well, that's not, it might possibly be. They have a corporate, or not just a corporate, they have a pool party. You can rent the pool in the evening after mm. hours. So if enough people were doing that, maybe, huh. you know, we can make this thing profitable. But uh, we had a, a local um, manufacturing company host a pool party for their employees and, and a couple other organizations. So it is available next awesome. summer. You hear that out there, guys? By the way, I, I saw in the ledger of six companies getting great workplace, uh, a couple of banks and mm. uh, some other places. So congratulations to all those nameless <laughs> Check, check the paper for a complete list. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're out of here. But that's great. And you know you can hire bands. What fun out there at the pool in the summer. Michael, thank you so much. You're welcome. Michael Halley, Jason Strong, James Moore. We ocha siestas. Mm -hmm.